Well, my vote would probably be a modified bird dog, sometimes known as a Superman exercise. Now, if having been in that position, in the all fours position, if you can be bothered to add in a couple more moves whilst you're in that position, I would say let's add in a thread of the needle exercise where we're helping to rotate through. Now, I mentioned rotation, but we obviously you do need to have rotation in the spine. We're reaching around to look at the rear view mirror, get your seat belt, whatever it be. But we really want that rotation to be in the middle spine, okay, so in the blue zone. And if you look closely at the, the joints in the spine, so these facet joints in the spine, the middle back, the joints are orientated in a coronal plane, which means they are designed for rotation. In the lower back, they're designed in a much more sagittal plane, so that means that, that forward and backwards motion. What that means, though, is that the, the vector, the, the, the axis point in rotation through the lower back, if it starts to happen too much in the lower back, it puts a massive strear force through the discs, and the discs start to sort of twist and grind. But in the middle back, the, the axis of rotation is actually right through the middle of the disc, so it's, it's much less torsion, much less strain on the back than the, the discs in the middle back if you can get that rotation to happen here. So what we generally want is a mobile thoracic spine that can rotate, and that's where the rotation happens. If that doesn't, what tends to happen if we have a th stiff thoracic spine, the rotation's got to happen somewhere, and it will often then happen in the lower back, and that's another reason why we can start to strain those discs in the lower back. So, the threading the needle exercise will just help to maintain that little bit of mobility through the middle back. The idea is not to go necessarily into a full stretch so that you start to then fit it into the lower back. The idea is quality, not quantity, or, not, or quality, not amount. So, as you're on that all fours position, just twisting, and you're getting that sense of each vertebra in the blue zone here, just doing its fair proportion and each you know, vertical trying to sort of move one after the other, keeping that mobility here, preserving the mobility here from happening. So we're keeping that stiffness, if you like, in the lower back. Okay, and then there's the second exercise, which I would suggest we do in that all fours position, is a quite simple cat and dog stretch, where we're just curving the spine one way and curving the other. Okay, so we're curving up this way and then we're curving the other way. Now, this is the one that people often get wrong, okay, and the idea, what they tend to do is they tend to go as far as they can one way, as far as they can the other. So as they're, let's say, as they're going this way, what's happening is potentially is that the, the, the facet joints are starting to compress together, that can cause irritation in those joints. So we don't want to go into full range, we just want to go almost 75% maximum. Similarly, when we go forward, I mentioned before, we don't want to go habitually too far curving the spine forward. It tends to put a bit of pressure on those discs, particularly if gravity is in the equation as well, of an upright position. But also, even when gravity is not in the equation, it can stretch some of the ligaments down the, down the back of the disc, particularly one called the posterior longitudinal ligament, which often acts as a barrier and a safety mechanism to those discs bulging. If that gets too stretched, again, that can lead to disc injury. So we don't want to go full range in that either. We're just, we're just going 75% of the range. The idea of the exercise is to just to get some movement through each segment of the spine get a bit of circulation to those discs, preserve the mobility in each segment. What tends to happen is if you get one or two areas which become really stiff, it's going to have to compensate somewhere, so then often what will happen is some of the neighbouring areas will become too loose and too mobile, and that is actually what can lead to disc injuries. So it's, it's a bit of a myth really, people, you hear a lot about mobility, 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 actually what you really generally need is stiffness, stability, stability, stability. That is going to be a much better preventative exercise or preventative scenario in terms of the most common cause of disc injuries, which is the most common cause of back pain, which is disc injuries. If you do want to go the whole hog and you want to look at a full structured progressive core stability program, that's over on the website injuryfitpro.com and I've got my core hero sorry, core zero to core hero program, uh, which you can download from there. There's also some free versions and free other kind of uh, mini, mini uh, exercise plans on that website as well for, uh, for back pain, but also other parts of the body. Okay, so I hope that was useful. I hope you found that really helpful. If you did, please leave some comments, leave, leave me a thumbs up. Uh, let me know what else you might want to see, other things you want to see on this channel. Um, obviously, subscribe to the channel um, if you can. Put on your notices as well, obviously, so you get a notification of any, uh, any new, new exercises I put out. So check back soon, and uh, I hope to uh, bring you some more useful videos in the near future.